Hello guys, my name is Edison. Uh, welcome to another STM32 tutorial and today I'll be showing you how you can configure the independent watchdog uh, in STM and I'm going also to uh, uh, demonstrate how you can use the uh, watchdog in any project. But before that, I'll give you an overview of the independent watchdog and it is a peripheral that uh, resets the device when uh, there is a software problem and uh, you can also use it as a free running timer for application timeout. So uh, it triggers the reset sequence when the timeout is reached. So it is also uses an independent uh, 32 kilohertz low speed internal oscillator that is the lsi and uh the good thing with this it it uh runs uh independently that means even after the failure of the main clock it will still remain active so once it is enabled it can only be disabled by a reset and it has several features and uh, one of the main feature of the uh watchdog is that it is a 12 bit free running down counter and it is clocked from the independent rc oscillator and again you can have a conditional reset uh, when the down counter becomes uh, less than zero or even when uh, it is reloaded outside the window so uh, if the window is opened so uh, setting the watchdog time base so if you want to have a time uh, if you want to have a uh, timeout of a certain uh, seconds or milliseconds, uh, what you can just do using this formula, you can calculate the value that you will put in the reload value, and you can also you uh, configure the necessary uh, prescaler value. So from here, you can see that we have. Uh, you can have a minimum uh, value of 125 microseconds to a maximum of that 2.8 seconds. So this formula from here, you can see that uh, the time, the watchdog, the independent watchdog time in milliseconds, uh, you can have, uh, it's equals to uh, time of the LSI. So time of the LSI in milliseconds, that is simply the reciprocal of uh, the uh, LSI uh, frequency, then you multiply by a thousand to get a uh, time in milliseconds. So then you multiply by four times two to power the uh, watchdog prescaler, and then from there you multiply by the reload a value in the reload register. The reload value uh, it's equals to uh, time in milliseconds times that two uh, thousand over four times two to power prescaler times a thousand minus one. So this is obtained from this equation by you find that that two thousand is the frequency of the LSI. You find that uh, this gives you the value that you need to put in the reload value. So, for example, if you have, if you want a timeout of uh, two seconds, that is 200, uh, 2,000 milliseconds, uh, you can use a prescaler of two, and uh, uh, you get the reload value uh, to be 3,999. And sometimes you, uh, you may do your calculation, and you find that the reload value is greater than 1,495. Uh, in such a case, what you do, you want to increase uh, the prescaler and uh, points to note is that when the watchdog is started uh, the 12 bit counter start counting down from reset value to 0 FFFF so to re uh, refresh the watchdog uh, counter the key value that is 0 a, a, a that's the hex must be written in the key register to reload the counter value so another important uh, point to note uh, is that if the down counter reaches the end of the counter value, a system reset is generated. So if the window option is enabled, the counter must be refreshed inside the window. So otherwise, a system reset is generated. So uh, let's start a new project. 
and uh, I'm using for four six R E nuclear board and select the board and start project. So the first thing I want to do here is clear the pinouts and uh, I'll be using two LEDs, one LED is connected to pin P5, oh, that is the green LED on the board, so I'll call it LED1 and I'll connect another LED at pin P6, so I'll call it LED2. And uh, from there I'll enable the uh, Go to RCC and then enable the HSE and also the low speed clock. And then uh, from here, I go to uh, independent watchdog and activate it. And uh, from here, you can see there are two things we have to configure here the prescaler and the reload value. So the prescaler value. Uh, the first one is prescale 0, this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we saw that to, uh, from the previous example, we saw that we have a 200 millisecond timeout. We have to use a prescale of 2, so this is 0, 1, 2. And then uh, we saw that the reload value is 3999. So from there, uh, we are good to go and uh, maybe to have a pip in clock configuration you can see that the clock uh, frequency to the independent watchdog is 32 or uh, 32 kilohertz and it is independent of the main clock so then from there uh, you go to project manager and uh, have uh, a name for this project uh, watchdog uh, tutorial and then I have uh, MDK arm that is carry vision and then generate a uh, code so after the code is generated successfully you open project then uh, from here the first thing that uh, I want to do is uh, build the code so the project uh, has uh, built successfully so go to application user code then main uh, in the main function uh, and uh, user code begin to I'll have a uh, uh, delay I can delay this for 500 uh, uh, milliseconds then from there I want to set one LED on so GPIO or right pin then I'll have LED uh, and then LED pin LED one pin, then uh, GPIO pin set. So I want to set one LED here, uh, just in case uh, this program goes into the main loop, it will not go here. So we can be able to visualize when there is a reset. So it will act like uh, it is blinking after every reset, and. Uh, what I want to do here uh, uh, is uh, build the project and then flash the code to our board. So uh, let us uh, manually set the board. 
uh, you can see that the green LED here it's blinking but uh, in our project uh, we have not uh, set up something to blink the LED but what is happening is that uh, the watchdog is resetting uh, the MCU after uh, every two seconds so uh, from here uh, now what I want to do is that uh, uh, since we know that the timeout happens after every 2000 milliseconds, that is two seconds, and we have the first delay is 500 milliseconds. So I want to refresh uh, the watchdog before the timeout. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, uh, watchdog, independent watchdog refresh. And the uh, first parameter is the uh, handle to the watchdog. And then uh, what uh, I want to do here again is that I want to toggle my green LED uh, connected to pin P6, so RGPIO, toggle pin. So toggle pin, then that is LED2, uh, GPIO port, then LED2 pin. Uh, pin and then uh, I want to have a delay uh, that will not uh, lead to a timeout more than two seconds so we can have a delay of uh, maybe one second so you'll see that we have these milliseconds 500 milliseconds and then we have these one second so you still have some few milliseconds, so the timeout will not be reached. So let's uh, build this. And then let's flash the code to our board and see what happens. So you can see that uh, the first green LED on the board, it's not blinking. Uh, this is because we have this refresh before the timeout. And that is why the code is only running in the while loop. So if we increase this delay to two, uh, uh, two seconds, so let's see what happens. That means uh, now uh, this will cause a timeout of 2,000 uh, milliseconds. And uh, what I expect is that we expect a reset. So now let's download our code and let's reset. So you can see a reset is happening because this uh, other LED is blinking. And uh, maybe if we blink the delay before this, if you blink the delay here and then build the code so probably what we expect uh, is that this line 103 may not be uh, executed so then we download the code to our board and then let's refresh that so you can see line 103 is not executed because this causes the timeout uh, of more than uh, two, uh, that is two seconds plus five uh, hundred milliseconds. So that is 500 milliseconds. So that is more than the timeout of two uh, milliseconds. So if I have these two at 700, so uh, let's build the code. So what we expect is that since this is 500 and this is 700, that is 1200 uh, milliseconds, that is 1.2 seconds. So we expect that uh, the refresh is happening before the, uh, before the timeout. So we expect this loop to run without uh, resetting. So let's Download our code and reset. 
So bingo, so you can see that uh, uh, that is how you can use the watchdog. And um, thank you for following up with me. If you like this tutorial, please don't forget to share, uh, like, and even subscribe for more. And uh, thank you. I'll see you next time. And if you have any other question, you can leave it in the comment section.